to the FB First Family Ministry Podcast. We're so excited to have you here, where our goal is equipping families to navigate life with God's truth. I'm Jonathan, and I got Aaron and Gabe here on the podcast today. We're talking about family worship, which is awesome. Let's get into it. So guys, family worship, we're back. Yep. Season two of Come the on. Family Ministry Podcast. Good to be here. How are you feeling about that, Gabe? You know what? Um, I'm not going to lie. I missed it. I, I miss our time together. I, I missed our gospel center conversations, and I am ready to be back. Did we uh, just have a whole summer? Did that just fly by? Yeah. Anyone else? That, we, ha- we have something. <laughs> we have something. I'm going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Camps know. and VBS and mission trips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, uh, it's a blink. It, it, it was like marble. You know, it's like a blink of an eye. It's like, what happened? Everything's done. All right, let's go. (laughs) I think on that note, uh, VBS for our family was very much a uh, family worship that whole Mm. week because we were Mm. all here the whole week. Come home, talk about VBS. Take Um, a nap. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. I don't think that happened. Sadly, I don't know that I've had a nap the whole summer. Well, <laughs> I know me, but well, actually, that's a lie. I, I have multiple. I have many yeah, naps. I know about you. I have multiple. <laughs> the, the moms right now listening are like, Jonathan, we hate you. I don't think moms <laughs> get enough sleep. No, I don't think so. Um, and uh, bro, so I've got you set me up so well for that, Aaron. That was like it's almost <laughs> like was, you knew. I it to you a it's few almost times. like you knew <laughs> that I was. I knew, but I wanted. To, so what I wanted to say first that you know, I on Facebook I saw a post and it said that this is how my year has gone: January, February, March. April, May, June, July, August, you know, it's just like sped yeah. by so fast. Yeah. And I think a lot of our families can relate to that. You yeah. know, like school's already here. It's starting. Some are relieved. Um, some are like, my kids are going for the yeah. first time. This is their first kindergarten, you know? Um, and, and man, y'all get to struggle. Um, I don't get it yet. One day I'll have <laughs> kids, Lord willing, and, and I'll get that. But um, I want to start off the podcast with a little bit of fun today because I feel like, you know, we're getting back into the rhythm of school. We need a laugh or two, right? Mm. Yeah, let's um, go. And so w- I wanted to ask you guys a question. Okay. All right. And I, and I want to see if y'all can get the answer right. Okay. So um, here's the question. On average, how much sleep does a mom get in hours? How much sleep does a mom get? Like Is average. Is this a riddle? No, 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 no. This is okay. It's just like so it's just, just a trivia question. Trivia question. Okay, so is yeah. this any specific stage of life? Like, I, it's very different having an infant. Right, right. I guess I would say the average. average this would be okay. this would be your average, like like newborn mom, mom of teenagers, mom of <clears throat> elementary schoolers. You know, any anywhere okay. in there. So I'm gonna guess like six hours. Six hours. That's my guess. I'll okay. say five, just to be one under her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a mom. Closest without going that's, over. That's Closest without right. going <laughs> over. That's the goal. He's hedging. All right. <laughs> Let's, uh, I mean, well, you guys ready to hear it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know the answer, so you can't Yeah, guess. I'm the only one that knows this answer. I am the expert on... Never mind. No, I just, you're the I just you're no, the ex- no. Wait a minute. You're the expert on how much sleep moms yeah. get. Nope. No, thank just you. No. Let that sink in no. for a minute. Let's read that answer. I didn't know that you could add that to your credentials. It's on my resume. Yeah. And wait, the answer why you, is. Why do you have a resume? The answer. <laughs> He's not going anywhere. <laughs> no, no. Fair enough. The We're answer, to know the answer. The answer is four hours of sleep. According to Google, mm. four okay. hours of sleep is the average set of mom. Would you say that's accurate, Miss Aaron? I, well, I have been definitely been through phases of life that that has been the case. Right. Um, I also was prior military, so I don't require a lot of sleep. So right. for me, right. that's... I would say that's low, and I, I would expect it to be higher. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. But, yeah, that's... Interesting. Mom's so out that there. Means we, so that means <laughs> you have 20 hours of productivity or just activity because <laughs> we all know that not every day is productive at all. So no, that's okay. Praying for your moms. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you yes. for all that you do. Thank you. For real. For real. I can remember when I was a teenager, I was a high schooler. Um, and, and my little sister, she was, she was a lot younger than me. I can remember so many times where, um, you know, my mom would have to wake up early with her, uh, and I would sleep in, you know, as a teenager late, you know, um, I was homeschooled too. So, you know, my schedule was flexible, you know, got that nine hours in as a teenager, you know, I'm just kidding. No, (laughs) but then, but then I would stay up late with my, I'd go into my mom and dad's room and say, mom and dad, Hey, do you have time to talk? 
And it'd be Aww. like 1130, like 12 at night. And it was great, like great conversation. But we didn't up talking until like one or two in the morning. Then my mom had to wake up at like four or five the next morning. So, yeah, thank you, mom, so much for what for what you do. Y'all are great. And those are those are interesting conversations. Um, my daughter does that often where she'll want to stay up late and talk. Um, sometimes she genuinely has things she really wants to talk about. Other times I'm pretty <laughs> sure she's stalling and just <laughs> trying to eat up the amount of sleep that I could otherwise get, but <laughs> right. it's fine. And it's important to connect during both of those scenarios. Right. Right. Yeah. I love that. I got, I got another one for you guys. So, okay. um, and if you're, if you're at home listening to this podcast in the car, whatever, see if you can, um, get this answer right. Um, after her father died, 25 year old Gina Yang traveled around the world with a life size cardboard cutout of her father. According to Yang, her father was always too busy to travel. So she wanted to honor his memory by taking him to famous landmarks such as the Louvre and the Eiffel Tower. Um, is this a true story or is this something that I just made up in my head right now? <clears throat> well, not right now. I mean, I typed it, but. Well, it's a very. I mean that's a very sweet sentiment. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. um kind I, of I, I guess. think to be <laughs> Yeah. I it's, wonder, it might be something I want to do personally. The, before nope. answering that question I would want to know because I always have questions before I answer a question. I would want to know would she have had to pay for a ticket on the flights cuz that <laughs> for if, him. If did that, he did he have was, to literally was he did they in a seat? did they have I his mean, own seat or or was it just like you know um you, you know you're sitting there let's say uh, you know I'm sitting there in the in in the you know aisle seat and I got a good seat man there's nobody sitting beside me then this person just kind of walks down the airplane with the cardboard cut out <laughs> you're just looking at them like they're coming towards you the g f 29 30 31 <laughs> And then they pass you. You're like, whoosh, and then they turn around. And, the guy, and you're like, no. Maybe she. No. Maybe she would fold him up and put him into. Yeah, the compartment. The compartment. That'd be great. Right. I, I mean, I, mean, she you, I, guess. <laughs> I mean, it, like, he probably wanted her to be economical too, yeah. right? I mean, with, <laughs> I mean, I mean, imagine walking through, like you said, imagine walking through the whole airport with this life-size <laughs> cardboard board, just. Of, of, of for everybody else, a random stranger. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So has I, to I, check out the snack shop. Can't take anything in. Leaves them outside. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Hey, Dad, wait right here. <laughs> hey, that's Don't go genius. anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't mean, move. In this day and age, people would have to honor that he right. identifies right. as a person. Absolutely. So. <laughs> we won't get in there. We won't. Get, no. no, we're, we're not going to get into that. This is that's a that different podcast. Okay, that's a different well, podcast. so I, you have you know True you, false. you have true some false. interesting thoughts and ideas. I think that would be a hard one to make up. So I'm going to go true. I'm going to I'm going to say that that was probably true. Yeah, I will agree with Miss. I have a fifty percent chance of being we, right. We are in, we are we we are interesting people. So, sure, why not? True. Well, um, unfortunately, that is f true. So, <laughs> <laughs> good job, guys. <laughs> yep, great job, great job. Yeah, no, that's a true that's a true hey, story, man. You do you. I, I just think that's awesome though that you know she wanted to take that time to honor her dad because you know she he probably you know uh, I don't know his situation his scenario but you know it looked like he worked a lot and he really yeah. wanted to travel so he sacrificed you know traveling yeah. a lot. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. You know, for cool, cool for, way, kind of cool way I guess to honor her dad. Yeah, you know? yeah, I mean, so, yeah, yeah. You know, very very interesting. So. Yeah. All right, well, sure. let's jump into our conversation for today, family discipleship. Um, hope y'all had a little fun with that, but we're jumping in today talking about family discipleship, family worship. What does it look like to do family worship? What is family worship? Um, are we commanded to do it? Is, this, is it best practice? What is family worship? I'm going to let our resident expert on the family, gospel conversations, the man, the myth, the legend, the guy with all the answers. Uh, man, man, this guy, I saw him looking in logos yesterday. He was like, hey, Jonathan, come here. Look at this. Look at this word. Look at this. Word. Come, come here. Check this out. And I was like, what, what, what are you talking about? I come over. He's like, check out in the Greek. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> bro, in the Greek, yeah, what are we talking about? We're going to get what that guy, where, wherever he is. We're going to have to look for him. I was... <laughs> And he was like, check this out in the Greek. Did you know? And my mind was just blown, man. This guy, the man, the myth, the legend, he's going to talk to us about family worship right now. Great father, great friend. Man, Pastor you, Gabe. You're going to make me cry, Zavala. bro. What's going on? <laughs> Calm down. I'm like, I'm blushing over here. We have a bet going. <laughs> I know. I'm like, who paid who? That's the question. <laughs> who paid who? Uh, We're well, all chipping in. Well, definitely. <laughs> there you go. $10. Um, definitely. Thank you for that, man. 
truly encouraging comments. Uh, definitely not an expert, but I, but I do know this. Uh, I, I'm in love with Jesus, um, and, and I'm, I'm called to follow him and to proclaim his name, and that's what I want to do. Uh, so family worship, I, I want to start first, first of all to just uh, lay this foundation, uh, and it is the fact that God is worthy of it all. Mm. I mean, we see throughout the whole narrative of Scripture that we're told that God is praiseworthy of, of all that we do. Uh, specifically, I want to read to you Psalms 145, which is a son of praise by David. And he says, I will exalt you, my God and my King, mm. and bless your name forever and ever. Every day, every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. Let, let me read this one last line. One generation shall command your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. And again, by the way, I will encourage you guys to read the whole uh, verse just because uh, the whole text, because it gives just this picture of, of just all the great work that God do, that just has done for us. And it's not that because of his works, we get to worship him because he's God, first and foremost, yeah, right? Uh, so so our purpose and our reason for us to honestly exist is to edify the Father, is to glorify God in all that we do. Uh, but I want to lay that foundation first and foremost because that means that our time, our energy is all to be devoted to him. Yeah, absolutely. All that we do in our lives is to be an act of worship. So uh, as we have this, this discussion on family worship, uh, our worship is 24-7, 365 days. Uh, it is something that we do all day, throughout our day. And the way we do that, of course, is different time. But today we are speaking about that intentional time that we separate to lead our families, to declare, as the text says, to the next generation, the mighty works of the Father. Mm -hmm. And again, yeah. let me remind you, parents, that this is not something that we just take out of thin air. Yeah. Uh, it goes back to the imperative given to us in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through verse 7, that tells us that we are to do what? That we are to declare right, the name of the Lord, that we need to, as the text says here, that we shall teach them diligently, to your children, yeah. and she'll talk to them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. Basically, that we are to tell our children of who God is, of his incredible works, and we need to do this not just partial time of the day, but throughout the whole day. And again, uh, we as a rhythm of life, we get to have the opportunity and the freedom to do that as a family by intentionally setting a time where we get to glorify God and we get to teach our next generation, in this case, being our children uh, of worship and, and just, just who God is. I love that. I love that so much. And that reminds me of 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether you, therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Um, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory mm -hmm. of God. Man, that right there rings so true um, in our lives and in everything we do in, in ultimately realizing how great God is. Like you said, we don't um, worship him for uh, only the good things that he, uh, the, the things that make us happy, mm -hmm. you know, in, 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 in fleshly on this earth. No, we, we honor him because he is God above all. Um, that reminds me of um, Psalm chapter 78, you know, uh, just a great passage of God's word where it instructs us um, starting uh, kind of in, in verse four and verse five, it says, um, uh, you know, he establishes a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach their children that the next generation might know the children yet unborn and arise and tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. And then this chapter is 72 verses long. Literally the rest of the chapter talks about this is what happened to Israel when they didn't do that. Mm. And then they came back to God and then they didn't teach their kids. So then they forgot God and then they were judged. And then they remembered God and then they didn't teach their kids. And then their kids, uh, you know, didn't follow God. And then they were judged. And it's a cycle of 72 verses talking about God provided, God gave. God, even, even in his judgment, was righteous. And the people saw his righteous judgment. They turned back to him, but then they didn't teach their kids. And because they didn't teach their kids the things of God, they didn't grow up knowing the things of God. Mm. They turned from God and they turned to their, what did they turn to? They turned to their self, themselves. Um, and other false gods and things. And so we see that happening even in the children of Israel 
And I would even argue we see this pattern happening today. There are faithful parents that have taught their kids the things of God and, and, and man, Thank you, Lord, for those um, parents. And it's so many in our church, I know, that I've talked to them, and, and they do that. They teach their kids about um, God's Word, and they teach their kids about the Bible, and that is awesome. Um, but this is just such an encouragement and an admonishment to us as, as uh, Christian uh, leaders and parents, you know, to, to train up the next generation in the things of God. As a homeschool mom, I often talk to um, parents who send their children to school, and they'll say things like, oh, well, I'm not a teacher, or I couldn't teach my kid. Um, and one of the most encouraging pieces that I heard early on before deciding to homeschool was uh, the notion that you are your kid's first teacher, and you yeah. should continue yeah, teaching absolutely. them. And it, it's not to say that everyone should homeschool, should should be able to, or should, should right. choose homeschooling right. their children. But it, it does say that it, it does show you that you should continue teaching them and not leaving it up to just Sunday school or church, because yeah. we know that we are called to instruct instruct them in the, I can't speak today. I'm sorry. I don't know what, what this is. Um, not this, is life. Cough. This, this is, is life. This is life. This is life with four hours of sleep. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but, you know, we are called to teach them and, um, learning alongside them, um, whether it's in the word of God or in, in the world and, you know, learning alongside culture and how to, and, and understanding scripture yeah. so that you can speak life into them and counterbalance what they're receiving out there in the world is so important. And I think, you know, we will talk a little bit more about this, but you don't have to know all of the answers and you, yeah. you, you're not going to. So opening yourself up to, to learning along with them is so awesome for me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and we just think about like, you know, not only, you know, the biblical examples of this, but also our Christian historical examples mm -hmm. of, you know, people who came before us and, and Christians from, you know, the first century all the way to now who, who just did family worship, put a priority on, on family worship. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's so true. It's, it's one of the, the, I like to study, of course, history, church history specifically. Um, and, and you'll be surprised how many men of the faith throughout history have exemplified this rhythm. Um, and, and again, and what I love about, about it, by the way, is when you read about some of these rhythms of family worship and how each of them did it in different ways, um, they were not perfect, right? No. There, there were no. men following God trying to be faithful. Uh, faithful in leadership, men trying to be faithful as fathers to lead their homes in a God honoring way, which is something that as men we need to remind, be reminded of that we're called yeah, to lead, uh, and that starts in the first ministry that we have been given, and that is our families. Um, but I, I just love it, and, and, and John Christum, which is one of, one of the greatest preachers in history, uh, said this. He says, "I urge that every house should be like a church, and every family." a spiritual shepherd, remembering the account that they each must give for his children. And of course, this is given to parents, specifically that. Uh, but that picture that, it, it, you know, sometimes we think about church as the building we go to on Sundays and Wednesdays. And, and here we're called to, to have a, a church in our home. Right, a place where we honor God, where we worship God. By the way, that's what the church is. Right? It's a place where we get to worship um, God and glorify God, and and that's precisely what these men of faith were doing throughout history. John Piper said the same thing. He says every Christian family ought to be as if they were a little church. So that was uh, Jonathan Edwards. Um, and again, once again, just that picture that your home should be a place of worship yeah. specifically to God, it makes like me little churches. Yeah, yeah, it makes yeah. me think of like the home being a mirror of the church. Mm, which is yeah. a mirror of the homes. Of the home, <laughs> right, right, yep, absolutely. Yep. Well, you think about, you know, there's so much language <laughs> in the scripture about, you know, how, uh, you know, the relationship between the church and Christ is is shown um, in an example through a husband and a wife. Um, there's so much of that language used in scripture, in Ephesians, in, in, uh, Corinthian, in 1 Corinthians, um, in, P in 1 Peter. Man, this language is used about, man, the church is, it, or the the family is an example of God's or the Christ relationship with the church, and we do well to remember that, you know, um, and and to to as husbands, you know, to to love well um, our wives and to lead our families and our kids, and um, and then as as wives, just to to continue to to follow in the way that God has um, for wives, you know, as laid out in the scriptures, and and that's that's just very important um, for us to remember, and and that goes into family worship. So I want to jump. Um, so now we've established the importance of worship. We've established that God is worthy to be worshipped. 
Absolutely, 100%. We're kind of going in now to like, I need to ask you practically. Yeah, what are the elements? Practically, how, like, what are the things that we do for this intentional family worship? Because is it just like, like you see the old, um, I don't know if adage is the right word, but like you see the old picture where like the father and the mom, they're sitting right next to each other. The father opens his Bible, perfectly turns to the perfect passage and says, no children. <laughs> and they're all just sitting, you know, no children. Hold fast to the faithful word as ye hath been taught. I'm going to argue that, that was like the doctrine. original filters of the world. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that right. just probably wasn't <laughs> how it was. No, Let's, but I mean, but the original nice filter. Nice, they're the, the OG filter. <laughs> are the pictures that we see now of that what you may be able by filter. sound doctrine to <laughs> resort that and that to convince. That has never happened in my house, by the way. Just want to declare that real quick. What? No, you don't. Nope. That, that wasn't your family nope. in those pictures? That's definitely not my family. <laughs> <laughs> what does it look like in your family? Uh, well, you know, and, and, I, and I will say, we we are we do follow our structure here, uh, but I love what you said, Miss Erin, about uh, every parent being their, their child's first teacher. Uh, and, I, and I think I want to add to that a little bit, if I may. Um, and it is this: uh, don't put expectations on yourself, uh, even as you think about that being a preach, teacher. Preach. Uh, where you think, oh, I have to be such as this teacher. No, at the end of the day, you are exemplifying to your child what you should be doing yourself, right? Mm. Um, and that is just following God faithfully, trying to obey His commands and try to dig deeper into His truth. Uh, so to just be careful to put a kind of worldly um, expectations on yourself, yeah. uh, because I, I think, man, I, I, I don't know about everybody else, but I know for me, if I do that, which I've done by the way, just being real with you, yeah. um, man, it's, it's quickly how I can get just just not encouraged, right? Yeah, right, I, just to, right. To realize my failures, but uh, I, I think the, the first way we do that is is the priority into digging into His truth, right? Yeah, yeah. reading Absolutely. the Bible. I mean, simply just reading the Bible. This is something that as a husband, as a dad. As specifically as a Christ photo, I should be doing in the first place you know, on myself. Okay. I should be spending time with the Father in communion, honoring, getting to know Him deeper. And that is precisely the same thing that I'm to do with, with my children. It's just reading Scripture, um, not, not getting too complicated, by the way, with it, too. I, I think sometimes, and I did this when I started doing our, leading our family worship, is I thought, okay, I have to read a whole text. Right, a whole chapter. In some verses, like Psalms 23, it's only six verses. Great. It goes perfect. Right. Um, but then you have... <laughs> We're going to go through <laughs> the book of Job. That's right. Everybody yeah, sit here right. and let's listen. Yeah, well, and, and, and I think when you have children, you realize that ain't going to happen, yeah. right? Uh, so one of the things that... that um, I'm reminded of, and by the way, this what do you is mean? I have plenty of time. I don't know <laughs> yeah. what you're talking yeah, about. Right. Like twenty hours. A well, day. we'll have plenty of time. Twenty hours a day, you know, just to sit down. Four hours of sleep for yeah, some moms. Four hours. Well, th there's this book called Family Worship by Donald Whitney, by the way, which is a lot of the structure comes from that. Uh, but it just basically says, look, just just be short. You know, yeah. be, be intentional in spending time uh, digging into scripture, but don't think you have to be a professor because you don't, yeah. right? You don't have yeah. to be a seminary yeah. student. You don't have to be this, this know-it-all when it comes to Bible trivia and stuff like that. Yeah, but I just, think if, yeah. You're, if you're intimidated by opening the Bible and just reading a passage, I love, um, we were talking earlier about the, the children's Bible. Mm -hmm use mm, that. Yep. I mean, it really breaks yeah. it down into yeah. nice bite-sized nuggets um, that, that kind of tells you exactly what, you know, what the story is. And you gave the example of your family um, acting it out. Yeah. And yeah. so yeah. being no. okay yeah. with the kids up, moving around, engaging, really, they're going to learn so much through uh, any example of what that looks like for mm. your family. So. Yeah. We were over at one of the families in our church's house for dinner one night and they were putting their kids to bed and we were going to play a game with them. Right. And I like, literally we were in the living room. They're like, all right, let's come together. Let's read a Bible story. Which one tonight? David and Goliath. Okay, so they pull out the David and Goliath, you know, Bible. it's like a book about David and Goliath, the story, they open it up, all right, and the giant did this, and they were all like, oh, I want to be the giant, I want to be the giant, and so they got up on the couch, and in the top part of the couch, they they jumped, and they were like, but the, and I fell down, and they, they were Goliath falling down on the couch and everything, and they just love that so much. Yeah. Now, that's not every family. Some families, right. you know, might prefer a more, you know, traditional approach to that, yeah. but others, you know, that might work really well you know, for engaging your kids. And I'll yeah. say what they act, what they sing. We'll talk about singing a little bit later, but what they act out, what they sing is what they retain. And yeah. so it's just important for, you know, us to get our whole bodies and our whole beings into what is family worship, no yeah. matter how that looks. Yeah, no, and I love that. I mean, at the end of the day, contextually, each family is different. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there's different flavors and how do you approach or how do you uh, 
practice this family worship, again, the mm. main thing is that you dig into his truth. I, I had a pastor, um, mentor of mine, who literally, yeah, his family discipleship and his family worship time uh, wasn't the the ESB Bible, but it was right. the children Bible, right? Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. And, and the whole point was to give the narrative of what was happening. So you're teaching these stories to these kids, and you're teaching the principles that you find in it. And um, these kids grow up by knowing that truth, right? And, right? and then of course, as they get older, you can get a little bit deeper. Uh, but be be excited about it, right? Yeah. Don't. Yeah. I, I think sometimes we we're so scared that we start reading like so. Therefore, <laughs> and I'm sorry, but that, that's scary. No, <laughs> and there are different seasons, right? That's when your kids are little, like I wouldn't expect, right. you know, well, I shouldn't say I wouldn't expect, but maybe people with older children, teenagers, they're yeah. not jumping off the couch. Maybe they yes, are. Right. I mean, that's right. okay. But, <laughs> when, and, you, you know? and you think about this. I definitely was. But definitely, when you think yeah, we I believe you, by the way. I yeah, that I, back because <laughs> I realized what I was saying. I'm like, uh, well, <laughs> maybe. Um, so, but I, um, what was I? Oh, yeah, yeah. So God, literally, our kids, when they're younger and growing up, especially through older preschool and whatnot, they're in that really gospel foundation stage. They're really learning the foundation of, of the stories and, and how the Bible, you know, fits to you know, not really exactly how the Bible fits together, but how the different stories are what in the, the Bible, what they are. are. Yeah. And yeah. then as they get older, maybe that first grade, second grade, third grade, they're really starting to formulate in their minds uh, what the gospel really is. Yeah. The whole Bible, wait a minute, the whole Bible is about Jesus. Yeah. Everything from they're Genesis like, oh, to Revelation I know this points piece, about this Jesus. Fits over I know here. this fits I've over here. I've heard this piece. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. As they start to get into preteens, they start to develop an identity. Who am I in this story? Am I, wait, I'm the one that's um, opposed to God. God. I'm the one that loves sin. I'm the one that's living in my flesh. I'm the one that needs to turn to Jesus. They start to make those uh, pieces fit in third, fourth, and fifth grade. And, yeah. and who I was, they focus a lot on who was Jesus, you know, in the, in the stories of Jesus, who they want to know about the characters and how they lived. As they start to get older, they start to learn about, um, you know, gospel purity and, and kind of, you know, as they get into that middle school age, they start to, you know, want to learn about, you know, what does it mean for me to live a holy life? Uh, be ye holy for I am holy. What is that like as I start to get into preteens? As high schoolers, they start to learn, well, I'm starting to become an adult. I'm starting to be independent, make my own decisions. <laughs> and um, how do I make my decisions in the framework of the Bible? What does that look like for me to become an adult? You know, Yes, and because they have that foundation, it doesn't seem so unattainable. Absolutely, right? absolutely. They, they've already built layers upon layers. Right. Yeah. When we, can, we should consider each of those stages whenever we're going through our family family worship at, at, you know, whenever they're like four or five or so, um, we're not having them lead the whole family discipleship time. Mm. But as they start to get older, as they start to, you know, 15, 16, 17, starting to open their Bibles and, and read for the family and to lead in, in song and prayer and, and, and to really, you know, because they one day are going to have to branch out to their own families. Yes. And they're going to have to lead their own families. And if they have that rhythm already put in, they already know how to do that. That's just an easy transition into, okay, now it's time for me to do that with my family. Yeah. You know? So just, just some thoughts on that. But So reading the Bible, what else? Yes, yeah, so I think the next one, of course, um, and, and you can change uh, which point you interject this, this aspect of it, but <laughs> prayer, right? <laughs> yeah. Communicating yeah. with God, it, it's a very crucial thing. And one of the things that, for me, again, speaking about my family contextually, uh, one of the ways that we do this is uh, before we get to pray to God, and, and by the way, uh, we, of course, pray in the beginning, a simple prayer, but but the prayer at the end, uh, after our family worship, is when we really kind of dig deeper into the prayer structure. Uh, but I always encourage my children to uh, say something or, or praise God for something that they, they are thankful for. Mm, that's good. Um, that's and good. that's just giving them perspective that before we go to the Father asking for whatever we might be praying for, we need to acknowledge what he has already done for us, right? Um, and all the incredible daily gifts, blessings, and miracles even that he does for, every, for us every single day. So I want to make sure that they get to edify the Father, glorify and praise his name before they go into supplication, right? Um, yeah. and, and then, of course, at the end, uh, we, we ask them, hey, so what is something that you want to pray for? And, and we try to do it two ways. We try to, of course, depending on the text that we're reading, the Bible yeah, verse, right. uh, we say, hey, so the verse talked about right being more obedient. So we pray for obedience, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes we just say, hey, what do you want to pray for? Or, or who do you want to pray for? And, of course, my, you know, my daughter's always, well, for you, Daddy, I'm like, okay, <laughs> I, I definitely need prayer. Dad, you um, need some prayer. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what do you There's know? 
things. <laughs> um, but uh, but uh, I love just giving an opportunity for my children to think through, hey, I get to pray for someone else. Yeah. Um, and, and that's just something that we do in our family. It's just just kind of teach them that structure a little bit. Um, yeah. I love Great. that. I love that. And that's super biblical. I mean, you think about the Lord's prayer, you know, he says, um, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name before anything else in that prayer, entire prayer. He's like, we need to focus in on the greatness of God and thank him for everything that he has given us. Everything on this earth, we would, everything, um, you know, material, immaterial that we have on this earth is from God. Wow. Wow. It's not about my accomplishments. It's not about what I've done. The Lord has blessed us to be there and teaching our kids. It, it doesn't come naturally for anybody, but you know, especially not for kids, you know, it's like mine, mine, mine. I want, I, I want, I want, I want, I want, but yeah. taking that time to say, thank you. And I think that it's important to, uh, to implement that informal prayer idea, right? Yeah. It's not just when we're, you know, starting family worship. It's not just before we eat. It's not just before bed. It's talking to God all day yeah, and having right. that rhythm of anything that happens, you know, good or bad, you know, just, just like you would want to tell your best friend. And that's really yeah. what you want to yeah. facilitate Absolutely. is your, your children growing that close friendship yeah. with God um, and, and ourselves, of course, and us doing the same right. and right. so modeling that for them. S something really, a quick quick story if I may. So one of the cool ways that my father-in-law, who's also a pastor, kind of taught my children uh, as a grandfather to pray is, so every time we were driving and there will be an ambulance or something, an accident happening, my father-in-law made it a point to say, okay, guys, let's pray. Yeah. And, and we don't know the situation. We couldn't stop, of course, uh, but we definitely pray for that. And now my children literally remind me every single time there is a fire truck, there is an ambulance, and the, the sirens are going. They're like, Daddy, time to pray. Yes, sir. Right? And, and I just love that. That Even grandparents, by the way, if you're yes. a grandparent, you have so much influence over your children. And, and family worship can happen, of course, in this intentional time, but it can also happen with you, grandparents. Absolutely. You know, when you have them at your home, uh, hopefully giving mom and dad a break <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> um, exemplify those opportunities, and, and it, yeah. it tastes ingrained in their lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. They go home and say, hey, mom and dad, can we do family worship tonight? Can we do Bible study tonight? Yeah. We did that at Nan and Pop Pop's house, you know? Yeah. That's Absolutely. Great. I love that. Okay, so Bible, praying, what else? <laughs> and this one, I know uh, Pastor Mordock loves doing this one. No. Uh, <laughs> th th this one can get a little bit hard, especially for men, but uh, singing, worshiping. Right? There's something uh, about a song. It, it, you just, it hits you yeah. different. The scripture hits you different in a, in a it song does. form. It, <laughs> it does. It, it, it does. So one of, the, one of the ways that we do, we, we end our time is with listening uh, to some worship and singing along sometimes. Uh, honestly, sometimes we just sit there and kind of uh, just absorb the truth. Uh, so we try, to be make, we try to make sure that the songs that we do choose are gospel-centered, yeah, right? They feel with truth. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and you'll be surprised. Uh, th there's been times where we just play a song and we're kind of all sitting there. Well, I say sitting there. My kids are jumping everywhere, by the way, <laughs> which is okay. Okay? Yeah. If your children are running around and jumping, don't stress out, right? The goal is for you to be faithful. They are going to be jumping around and sometimes you might just say, hey, guys, calm down, and they, they, they'll they try to, right? Hopefully. Uh, hopefully they're obedient. Um, but if they don't, it, it's okay, mom and dad. Like, you, you don't have, this doesn't have to be like a sit-down kumbaja moment where nobody <laughs> nobody moves, uh, and 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 that's it, right? But just just you be intentional. Uh, but there's been times where my, we, me as a family, we as a family sit down, and we have worship time, and I think, man, like, are they getting it? Because they're not singing. Like, my kids are just either playing something. Like, my daughter one time, I, I didn't see her, but she she grabbed her tablet, right? And I kind of allow her to kind of, again, run around a little bit, but they, they need to be hearing us a little bit as well. Uh, but she grabbed her tablet, I'm thinking, What's what going on? Sometimes? Like, yeah. no. Yeah. Like, and next thing you know, um, there's this one song that she always wanted to hear. And then one time we didn't play it, which is Tremble. And she's like telling me what the song says. And, and she's singing the song to me. And here I am thinking, she wasn't even hearing this song all this time. Mm. And yeah. yet, like, although she might be functionally doing something else, I mean, she was attentive to what the song was singing. Yeah. And yeah. she was hearing it. And I, th I think that's a lesson for me at that moment to say, you know what? Yes, they might be jumping. Yes, they might be running around. But but they're actively listening to that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and sometimes they giggle and sometimes they do something. And again, the goal is for me to exemplify grace in that moment, but to continue to do what I've been called to do. And again, as men, as I know that I know I'm not the best singer. Um, me either. I wish I was. That'd be great. Yeah, But God I was like, 
uh-uh, not no. doing that thing, right? <laughs> um, but, uh, but man, I just, I just go out and say, because I want my children to know that dad, no matter how horribly I sound, when they tell me that, stop singing because it's bad. But I want them to know that for God, I'm doing everything yeah. that I'm called Absolutely. to do. And, and it might be awkward, Right, it might be a little bit scary sometimes, but my goal is obedience. Right. You know? Well, and I've learned, you know, I sound a lot better whenever the YouTube song is turned up really, <laughs> really, really loud. loud. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, feel free to grab a YouTube video of a you know worship song or something that you're you're hearing in in the service. You know, John and Jennifer do such a great job of picking those songs, and so just like listening to those songs as a family, um, play it on the YouTube and turn up the speaker really loud. You know, I mean. It's a good good strat, but I think yeah. So some practical tips for you know implementing family worship um, include you had mentioned being brief. Brevity is is super important, Absolutely. right? Don't don't draw it out, but at the same time being flexible. So if it's going long and your kids are really into it and you're really into it, let it go. I yeah. mean, just keep yeah. keep it going. Even don't if it feel means, like you have to like. Yeah, you know. even if it goes into bedtime a little. If you're yeah. if you're doing the rhythm at night and that's your family thing, you know, let it go a little bit longer. If you're if you're a family that does this in the mornings. Um, God bless you. And that's, um, uh, you know, if you're, and, and you might have seasons of life where mornings are better than evenings, that's okay. So having that, um, that being short and having that regularity, but also having flexibility. And I think flexibility is particularly hard for me, um, or has been in the past. I'm definitely working on that and have been much better, but like you talking about your yeah. kids, um, jumping around, there was a point in my life where that would have, I would, I would think, wow, that's crazy. Like I couldn't, imagine dealing that I'm definitely working on the perfectionist mm. part of things where it doesn't have to be perfect and it should be messy and we should all show up authentically for our yeah. kids and for yeah. God yeah. and just showing what that's like. So I appreciate you sharing that because it allowed me to realize that that isn't, um, that's something that at one point I would have just almost had a panic attack listening to you say that. <laughs> Let alone, please but no panic attack. No panic attack. <laughs> but um, but and that's part of you know just the military background, just right, having right, that like right, right. total obedience, a hundred percent. Where that's not, um, it, God doesn't say sit and listen to the word and be still. Yeah. Well, at least you guys are the theologians. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. as far as I've read, I, I don't think that that's part of it, but he does call us to sing. Yeah. He does call when, us to worship. When kids are kids, they're going to, you know, they're going to act like kids, yeah. you know. And, and that, I've been growing learning, in that yeah, way absolutely. a lot to just be absolutely. more tolerant of kids yeah. being kids. Absolutely. And so um, a couple of, you know, a couple of things that have come to mind as we're, we've been talking so much about the, the father's role in the house. So mm. um, what some questions that, that come up are like, what if the father's not a Christian or what if there's no father present in the home? How yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and with that, we've got to really consult like the scriptures on, you know, and those are really hard situations, very difficult, you know, um, to, to work through and to navigate. But, um, you know, as a mom, you know, you can in, in sense, and this is scriptural is lead in that family worship, you know, um, empowering your husband to, to do things sometimes, you know, one thing that when, when just being honest, when Kaylee and I first got married, um, we didn't pray before we went to, to bed at night. But one thing she started to do with me was saying, Hey, Jonathan, would you mind leading us in prayer tonight? And just her allowing me that opportunity, and I'm being super <laughs> vulnerable right now, but just her stepping in and, and kind of, you know, pushing that, pushing that to me, allowing me to lead instead of like, okay, fine, I'll pray, you know, but she said, hey, l w would you mind praying for us tonight? You know, and I was like, absolutely, yes. And it's become a rhythm in our family. Um, and so just, just like setting that, uh, doing that and allowing, you know, most dads, I mean, um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like most dads would be willing to just like read read the Bible, you know, just like if you ask them, hey, would you mind reading this passage for our family tonight? You know, m most dads would, would probably do it. Um, it. It comes difficult whenever there's not a father in the home and things like that. And and so, but it, continuing to lead in that with your family is so important. And, and no matter what that looks like at night, you know, I know it's it's got to be really busy being a single mom um, for sure. And and so like navigate or, or a single dad um, navigating, you know, what that looks like for your family. For sure. And I, I think that there's uh, to respond to, to those those two great questions, by the way. Um, you know, I think if a dad is an unbeliever, a mom, you still have a responsibility, right, uh, to yeah. teach your children. And I just want to encourage you that, um, you know, we will definitely be praying for you guys. Um, but also, like, give your husband opportunities for, for him to 
to step up. And, and yeah. maybe that will be the testimony. Maybe that will, that will be the avenue by which God uses through the work of the Holy Spirit to reach his heart and to reach uh, his life and to present the gospel call for him. Uh, because I, I, you'll be surprised how many men um, might be willing to read the Bible because yeah. they understand that this is going to be a family time. Now, right, I'm not saying right. all of them. That, that's not the case, right? No, we know no. we, we know that that's not the case. It's not, not realistically. But uh, just extending the opportunity constantly, right? He might say no the first hundred times, mm. but what if he says yes the hundred and one times? Yeah. So, yeah. Mom, yeah. I, I, be strong, be faithful. Uh, just find, uh, find yourself founded in God's truth, in God's promises uh, that he will take care of you. Uh, and, and again, remember that you are also commanded and called to instruct and disciple your children unto the Lord, yeah. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. So even if you are not, um, even if the husband is not leading the home, mom, you still have a, a, a beautiful blessing and opportunity to do that. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm so excited to jump into all this stuff. And man, we have about an hour and a half more of content and Bible and everything. We encourage you guys, grab this book. If you don't, if you don't already have a copy, grab this book, Family Worship. It's very skinny, very small. And uh, how many pages is this? It's like, 80 pages and they're tiny pages. So, you know, it's, it's a good book. Read through it as mom and dad and, and just jump into what does God have for your family in regards to family worship? What does that look like for you? Yeah, and um, I think, Any other resources, any other thoughts? Yeah, we have some, uh, we'll post some, some resources. Um, I think one of the biggest pieces of encouragement I can say is having 20 hours a day as moms, as yeah. you guys have already <laughs> proven. Um, and, and it just feels so full yeah. all of the time that I hear, you know, we hear people say, well, I can't afford, you know, we can't afford to, to put that into the time. Where are we going to put that time? And, yeah. and the question I would encourage you to really uh, pray on and, and meditate on, if you will, is um, can you really afford not to? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great question to end our, our, our time That's here a great question. Yeah. Leave you with that. <laughs> absolutely. We'll leave you guys with that. Um, hey, we really appreciate y'all joining us on the podcast again. It's, it's always so fun to do this. And we'll see you guys next week. In the meantime, we're praying for you families. See y'all later. See ya.